anytime you're doing a retaining wall of 18 inches, 24 inches or so, and you don't want it to settle, we put down not only a concrete pad, but there's concrete pilings that go 42 inches down throughout this. The other side, on the water side, that will not be affected because the ice never goes down more than 68 inches over on that other side. We've got a big waterfall coming down through those two rocks over there, which will have a totally different effect than the big waterfall over on the side. Look at how great this is gonna be from inside the house. That is framed, right? And that's a good four foot drop coming down right there. So you get to see it from all the windows inside the house. The hardest thing when you're trying to pull off a big sheet style fall is to make sure that you've got a cove set back behind it. So we wanted to really make sure that the drip edge of the stone is out further than rocks in here. And right now it's just past it. So we should be all right. Looking forward to the weekend? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you guys get that trench dug all the way to there, yeah. we'll let you go home early today. After that? We'll yeah. <laughs> 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 so I don't know what's more exciting, setting the first rock of the pond, seeing it kind of come together. You've been visualizing this thing for three years and now it's actually coming to reality. I really want to see a four foot high waterfall, four and a half foot high waterfall someplace. And I've got this massive rock and it might work out to our advantage. This project is turning out incredible and we are having a blast putting it together. The challenge with the power head is it does this. Water pushes from this direction and then sucks, obviously, from the back underside of this. So in normal application, power head would sit like this. It would pull water from back here and then push water here. What I was worried about, if I'm pulling a lot of water from this area down in here, the leaves and debris get kind of confused on where to go. And I want all of that stuff to go this way and then ultimately overflow through our waterfall. Hey, so we're out here at the Downers Grove job. I think we're about two weeks in, not including the time I spent out here digging alone. Things are really, really coming together. Just wanted to kind of give you an overview, especially because when I got here this morning, I was just super excited to see how things are coming together. Last night, we started placing one of our waterfall stones and I didn't get to see it actually put in place. We left Udi and uh, those guys to kind of notch it in a little bit, but I got here today and I'm loving the way it looks. But let me give you an overview and just kind of show you where we're at, where we hope to be by the end of the day and what's in store for next week. So you got Matt and Udi working over here. This is the swim up koi bar. On the other side, we've got a concrete footing that's going in. And the main reason we have to do a concrete footing on this side and not on the other side is this side is affected by freeze thaw. So anytime you're doing a retaining wall of 18 inches, 24 inches or so, and you don't want it to settle, we put down not only a concrete pad, but there's concrete pilings that go 42 inches down throughout this. The other other side on the water side that will not be affected because the ice never goes down more than six to eight inches over on that other side so we've got this wall here this wall here underneath this and then a granite countertop will cover this space again this whole area is going to be a sunken fire pit which will be a really cool effect looking out across the water at a lower level next to it this whole pond overflows water level has to come down lower than the height of that patio and it's going to move around and finish into a rainwater harvesting system over there. This space will be a big uh, pergola. We've got a big waterfall coming down through those two rocks over there, which will have a totally different effect than the big waterfall over on the side. We've got part of our slate floor in, or actually all of our slate floor. We weren't originally gonna do slate through here. We were gonna do it through the whole thing, but we've decided to do sand on the bottom of this. I'm okay with the sand being on the bottom of the pond, not so much throughout everything. If we put it up and through here, I'd be really worried about that sand all migrating down to the bottom but at the bottom can't migrate any lower than where it's at so it works out really good still so happy we took the extra time to carve that in place and then you can see Chris over here fine-tuning our waterfall so let's get over there and and look at that but from afar look at how great this is gonna be from inside the house I mean, that is framed, right? And that's a good four foot drop coming down right there. So you get to see it from all the windows inside the house, big giant fall. It's gonna fall in about eight inches of water just below it. And some of our concerns over here are this. 
the hardest thing when you're trying to pull off a big sheet style fall is to make sure that you've got a cove set back behind it. So we wanted to really make sure that the drip edge of the stone is out further than rocks in here. And right now it's just past it. So we should be all right. The other thing I want to look at is when this water comes down, all this small gravel, there's no way it's going to stay. So we're probably going to actually pull this small gravel out and mortar this area here so we never worry about gravel moving and disappearing. And then of course on this side we still need to get to frame. I think it'll look great too with this curve in here to get another piece kind of falling this way. The other thing we have to look at with now choosing a waterfall stone so wide because it's a good four feet wide. Our rule is 1500 gallons of water per width. So at four feet we need at least 6,000 gallons of water coming over that for it to look right. So we'll run a 9PL up here and we should be perfect for that waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> you can come back over here, kind of a beachy area going on. This is about 12 inches underwater here, and then that gravel is just going to kind of slope up. But with this big cove, the challenge we're going to have is dead water, stagnant water in here. So we've got a three inch line that's running from way over by our rainwater harvesting system coming through here. We'll put a jet here, and the rest of this three inch line goes to another jet that sits underneath this guy, valves in there to control everything, and then the rest of that goes to our water walls. We got Corey and Ryan and trenching some pipe, it's all coming together. Anything to add for today? TG really. TGIF? Another day. Another day. <laughs> Looking forward to the weekend? Yeah, same way. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you guys get that trench dug all the way to there, yeah. we'll let you go home early today. After that? We'll yeah. I think that's it for me. I think I should probably go help Chris. He whispered, can you go push something? <laughs> so that's it. So we're doing our last pool up on the top. This waterfall is kind of all buttoned up here. And so before we finish up behind it, we have to do our overlap with our liner. So again, the whole idea with an overlap is as long as this liner comes over the top of our pond liner, which would come up and underneath, any leaks would move its way back down that way. So we have a 20 by 20 foot liner here and we're gonna overlap it, then take this whole liner, fold it back this way, and then backfill up to all of this stuff in here. So excited, so excited. getting ready to cut out for the day. We had a very productive day. We are right at the upper pooling area here that is going to start off the waterfalls, not only on this side, but also on the other side, facing the swim up bar kind of area with fire pit on the other side of it. So, oh, let me walk over here. We have all of our waterfalls built on this side. We've got that pitcher style waterfalls falling down and through there, and it will pool up and then come down through those rocks. And then there's also gonna be some supplemental water coming down through that area and through there, which will look awesome. Them. We, as Brian showed you earlier in the video, we got this massive cantilevered piece of ledge stone that will have a big veil of water that will end up being probably about four feet tall when it's all said and done because water level is right about there. That's going to be awesome. We've got some of our lights in there. We've got a little two watt color changing light there. We've got a couple of the four watts back behind this kind of triangle rock there. We also placed a couple of our lights right there that will shine up on the walls. We've got our diffusers in. We've got a little light that will shine up through that little hole in the stump right there. And it's just going to be a really, really cool effect at night. When we come back, we will continue working on that upper pool. We're supposed to get another load of rock coming in, which is always fun and exciting because we're kind of running out of smaller rock. Believe it or not, it's all big stuff left. And in the upper pool, we do need some small rock up there. We're really praying that the load that shows up is what we need to finish that area up there. And then we can continue on the retaining wall around the backside, get all of our plumbing and stuff buttoned up over there. And uh, I wanted to show you the awesome job that Matt and and Juan did on this exterior retaining wall in through here. Now this is gonna be a seat wall and that's the exterior wall, the interior ones on the inside of the liner, obviously in the pond, but that will have that granite countertop over the top. And then the fire pit is going to sit basically just in front of that bucket there. So huge fire pit. This will all be retaining wall stuff in through here. We've got our negative edge just gonna come down through there, overflow. It's just looking incredible and super excited to get back at it tomorrow, but we're going to call it a day today. Okay, sign off. Oh,